During disasters, I work in, in uh, emergency operations centers, uh, whether it's at the county level or at the state level. During non-disaster times, I concentrate on building partnerships with emergency managers and uh, government individuals around the state. What I like about serving on the board is that it gives me a great opportunity to really see the whole picture of what the Red Cross does and how it affects our community uh, locally and globally. It allows me to touch and get an understanding of things like our smoke alarm project, uh, the work that we do at the state fair, the work that we do going to fires and disaster and recovery. Um, I really like getting that full picture and seeing ways that we can improve upon that and affect it. And really the kind of a goal of the board is to really focus on preparedness for the Red Cross so we can do a little bit of risk management on the front end hopefully prevent some of these disasters from happening on the back end. And so I'm happy to, uh, coming from a little bit of an, I have an insurance background, I've learned a lot in that area. And so to be able to apply that to the Red Cross has just been uh, a great opportunity for me. Well, when we first started, we were in part of a disaster action team where we would go to fires. And Jim could go anytime I was still working and so I could do it on the weekends. So that's kind of how I got going into it. Uh, and then over the years, we've just involved, evolved into other jobs. You know, we work in the disaster office here. Uh, we do a lot of things for service to armed forces. And um, Jim has some unique things he does being ex-military. They needed someone to go to yellow ribbon ceremonies for the uh, troops that were leaving here to be deployed and so they could get in touch with the Red Cross for emergency messaging. Last year we participated in Trunk or Treat, which was out at Camp Dodge, and it was for children of military families. That was our first opportunity to do that. And so we got to wear Halloween costumes and give away Halloween candy, and the kids loved it. We had a great time doing that. And then for the first time last year we did food boxes for military families, and we did 25 for Thanksgiving and 25 for Christmas. A couple of years ago, I served uh, in Pennsylvania with Hurricane Irene, and was in the office one day, uh, and noticed a lady uh, come into the office, it was very hectic, and a lady looked like she was looking for somebody, but everybody seemed to be very busy and not paying a lot of attention, so I asked her if I could be of assistance to her. And she said, I just need somebody to talk to. And I said, okay, let's, let's sit down and talk. And she was telling me her story. She had been in uh, one of the southern states during the flood, during the hurricane. And when she came home, her house was destroyed by the flood. And so she was very devastated. And all she was looking for is just somebody to lend an ear, to listen to her story. And it was probably one of the most touching moments that I've had during my uh, service with the Red Cross. I do spend a lot of time uh, volunteering for the Red Cross through uh, different committees and my board commitment, but to me it's just worth it to give back. And what I do is a lot of, you know, on the strategic side of things and planning, but it, honestly it's the, the volunteers who are going out to the fires and who are helping these people and, and I do my work for them. We've had um, a fellow with a Christmas cart and we gave him the Christmas cart and he was so excited to get a Christmas card. And he wanted to give it back when he was done. And I said, no, that's for you. And he just went like this with the Christmas card and went scurrying off to put it in his room at the, the hospital. And I was standing there crying. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's battles like that that are really fun. You know that we made a difference for that fellow that day and we did nothing more than give him a Christmas card. There's some misconceptions about the Red Cross and what we do, can do, can't do, etc. When it comes to fires, for example, it may not be something that we uh, can take care of at that time of the fire. It may be a day or two later when they realize uh, they've lost something or they need something that um, they can't fulfill. Well, I think there's a misconception about what the Red Cross is. A lot of people do think it's swimming lessons or blood, um, and there's just so much more 
to the Red Cross than that. I mean, those are two great you know aspects to the Red Cross, but there's so much more, and I think education is a key point of, of what I try to do as a board member to educate uh, my community on all the different things that the Red Cross does because we, what the work that we do is amazing. It's just, it truly changes people's lives and we help people, um, you know, a lot of times in, in their darkest hour and um, I don't think a lot of people realize the full effect of, of the Red Cross, what the Red Cross can do. I think it surprises most everyone how ingrained SAF or Service to Armed Forces is with the Red Cross, but it's been going on since the Civil War. And we still do some of the same things and visit military hospitals. I think if more people knew um, our involvement with the military, uh, they would be more willing to help on that. Um, it's kind of tough to say no to, uh, to what the military is doing. And it's really a privilege for us to, to do these, uh, as I say, little things that, that make a difference. Day, night, winter, summer, it's, um, it's what we do. And we do it because it's giving back and what we enjoy doing.